Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'll start the meeting. It is 5.03 p.m. And I'll call the meeting to order. Um, first thing we need to do is review and approve the minutes for October 14th. Um, everybody get a chance to look at those, OK? Any, yeah, I wasn't there, but I think I can still go for them. Yep, I believe that's the case. Yeah, so. Well, if there's no other comments about the minutes, then we can um, do a roll call vote to accept them. Uh, do you want to make a motion, Denise, or anybody? A motion to accept the minutes. Oh, here's Elaine and Ashley yeah. just texted. Sorry, I was just looking at that. I think she yeah, might be joining that's what I'm too. At, what I'm looking at too. Sorry, I'm distracted. That's okay. Elaine, welcome. We're just um, voting to approve the minutes. Um, and we had a motion to approve them from Denise. We just need a second. Yes, second for sure. Great. Uh, so I'll do a roll call. Um, Denise. Uh, Phil? Yes. Elaine? Nope. Elaine popped back off, I think. Uh, Michael, yes. And Elaine, are you able to hear us? You have your microphones muted. There we go. Uh, um, so Elaine, we're doing the vote for the minutes and Great. Denise, Phil and I have said yes and Elaine. Yes. Excellent. All right. So, uh, minutes are approved and Elaine, I'm going to hand the meeting over to you if that's all right. I have to leave Great. at 530. Uh, yeah. Great. All right. On to financial statements. I will talk quickly and try to keep this as brief as possible, but obviously if you have a question, interrupt me or ask at the end. Um, so I did email out the expense reports through October 31st, uh, and there were 14 warrants signed electronically, totaling $76,824.13. Thank you for doing that. Um, I don't have any concerns to report on the general fund or the school choice accounts right now. We're just monitoring things. Um, there are some savings that we've seen in the general fund due to various things. Transportation, for example, is less because of the contract negotiation um, and some staffing changes have resulted in some savings, but there's no concerns at that at this point. Um, any questions about those reports that I sent over? So no. Yeah. Um, could you just uh, just I, I saw that there were some staffing positions like occupational therapy that haven't had any expenditures on those accounts at all could um could you just address that I, I mean that just surprised me i don't know yeah so this is one of my jobs uh, goals that i'm working on is fixing the elementary school payroll so currently the database doesn't support processing payroll in our system because the towns technically pay school employees so we're always behind because we do journal entries to book the report or book the um, wages. So usually when I print this report, my staff is behind in the postings. Conway, um, Brenda, the payroll specialist and I attempted to set up this summer through the database and are using this as a test this year to see how it works. And we're still slow in getting that up and running. So you'll probably see wages that are not in there yet, but things really are expended. Um, you know, I can't so think of that. Anything. Go ahead. The, the, I, I never saw I never saw something where um, there was more than a hundred percent of an of an encumbered amount in an account, like the school nurse. So I don't even know. Uh, um, but I guess that explains that too. I don't know. Yeah, let me look at the nurse line. Um, yeah. So the nurse wages, the way that they look right now, 
I, I think what Brenda has done is test some things. So it's put some credits back into different lines. So it's going to look a little bit wonky because we're trying to figure out an easier, more efficient way to do this so that we have a more accurate snapshot month to month. Because a lot of times, like I said, things don't get booked until after the fact. And I'd like a more realistic picture. So unfortunately, the wages are something that do look a little bit wonky in the reporting system. But I have a separate spreadsheet that's the budget working um, spreadsheet that I make modifications to the staffing. And there, there's no concerns at this point with any of the numbers. But I do appreciate you guys looking at those numbers and asking those questions, Phil, to make sure you understand what's going on. Is that, an official, is that an official official financial term, wonky? <laughs> it's one of my favorite words. That's great. <laughs> the, um, the, the, so the only other question, I guess, would be um, just school committee legal expenses. We're already over on that. Yep. And, um, the year the year is still young. Um, yeah, so what we do is we enc we encumber the funds for the entire year. And that way, we when we get the monthly bill from the attorney, we just pay down the monthly bill. Well, at the beginning of the year in um, late July, early August, we got notified that they were raising their fees. And so all of our schools are over in legal fees right now. So I have made a note to myself to reach out to them more um, in the budgeting process January or so before we really start finalizing numbers to see what they're thinking for a rate increase. They have had a rate increase um, for at least the past couple of years because when this came in, I did go back and look historically um, and the elementary schools this particular year didn't have enough funds in there. So unfortunately, that's an overage that we have to live with because we do have to pay that retainer. Yeah, but of all people, you would think, of all people, you would think, you know, they would understand the scholastic budgeting process and the need to do these things in advance. Sure. And maybe they did, but, you know, it didn't get to my desk or, you know, maybe Mark and Judy were notified, like when the budget was built the year before and then things never got changed when I was working on it. So, you know, it certainly could have happened. It could have got stuck on someone's desk in, in my office, but it is what it is at this point, and I, I will work to make sure that we know better in the future so we can plan properly. And two things on that. One is that we probably, our billable hour, the amount of hours we've had to use them this fall, it was probably more than a couple years worth. Um, I'm on the phone almost almost daily in the beginning of this thing. Um, and then I asked my other question to you, Shelly, is the total numbers within your report correct then? When you're saying that the line items on the salaries are, are wonky, are the does it, are the totals correct though? The budget I mean, column is what's correct, and okay. anything that is year to date is correct. Okay. It might be that, like Phil pointed out, there's a salary line with no expenditures in it yet because payroll hasn't actually been booked. But the budget column, that number there, uh, one point nine five two seven or two seven two, is our actual budget number. And then the year to date is a true number of what's been put in the system. That, that was that was my assumption, but I was kind of it was one of those kind of questions I'm asking where I kind of knew the answer and, and wanted, yeah. wanted, the, wanted the committee to know that when they're looking at this report, it doesn't mean that the, the totals are incorrect and that the whole thing is off because those lines are off. But those those totals are correct, so we're you're still seeing a live budget. And, and Phil, you probably knew that because you look at enough. I'm just saying. What's that. often wrong on these reports at all of the elementary schools because of payroll especially is the available budget balance remaining but like i said i have a pulse on it through an excel calculation to know okay if something is over here we have savings here so that i can see the offset um, but that's always a moving target in all of our budgets but the year to date is always accurate and the budget number is always accurate encumbrances as well because that's what's actually in the system waiting to be paid so we don't have an issue with the budget number so that's a good clarification Darius um, okay I'll keep going yes good okay so school lunch uh, is probably the biggest thing that we need to talk about tonight so I've you've been hearing me talk about this every month since the summer um, that school lunch was going to be a problem once we knew that we were pretty much exhausting all funds from last year 
and uh, the government extended the free and reduced lunch for all students. Um, so I gave you a snapshot of revenue and projections and the amount of breakfast and lunches that we've served to date. So in school breakfast and lunches are almost matching about 1300. Um, that would include September and October. And then we have 140 breakfasts and 430 lunches picked up by community members. Uh, so our total revenue is just shy of 10,000 and our total expenses are just over 14,000. So year to date, we are at a loss of $4,000 in the school lunch program. We had about 6,000, a little over 6,000 starting off the year. So currently we have a positive income of $2,129. Things are gonna to continue to fluctuate throughout this year, obviously, um, but October is a pretty good baseline for us because it's one of the months with the most days of students in school. There's 22 school days, I think, in October. Um, obviously, November has more holidays, December has even more holidays. So those months where we're only serving, you know, 17, 18 days, revenue's lower. Um, so just looking at where the projections are right now and talking with our food service director, we don't believe that we're going to bring in enough revenue to cover all of our expenses and our wages for the year, which is not a surprise. It was just I didn't have a good um, estimate on the revenue coming in until this month. So we do have some savings in general fund. I do think we can absorb some of our wage costs into the general fund from some savings from other lines. I'm just not sure yet how far exactly that's gonna go. Um, I need at least another month to see what revenues look like. Um, I think for now, we'll keep things as they are. Um, it's okay that we run the account negative currently. We just have to write, balance it at some point. Um, and I don't think there's enough in the general fund savings to cover the full 30,000 that were estimated for wages. So I'd like to give it a little bit more time um, and hopefully in the December meeting, have a bigger projection farther out for us to consider and see where we can move that from. We will have to come up with another funding source if I can't move it all to general funds such as school choice. Um, any questions about that? No, okay. Um, COVID up, it's Elaine, do you have the, the, Just the bane of our existence, school lunch budget, <laughs> always. Yeah. I, I do understand it has been a problem for some time. And I think that we were starting to come around to a better spot, you know, especially ending last year on the positive, although that was in part because we did transfer some money over from general fund. Um, but, you know, we'll have to keep a close eye on it for sure. Thankfully, it's only the school lunch account that we're having an issue with. It's not preschool. It's not special education revolving because in some of our other schools, those accounts are also problematic given COVID-19 closures, less enrollments, and higher expenditures. Um, so I'll keep you updated, obviously. Next month, I'll have some more numbers for you. Um, COVID expenses. So the town, uh, thankfully, is going to support our full request for COVID Municipal CARES Act funding. It was about $58,000 that we asked the town to cover in COVID-related school expenditures. Um, about 38,000 will come back to us in reimbursements for the eligible expenses. And then we have around $20,000 of new items that we're placing um, as we speak, orders going in for primarily technology related things, but also some other things that the school needed, additional recess toys to allow for better social distancing on the playground, things like that. Um, and then I gave you a breakdown of the COVID expenditures here on this report just so you could see where the money was being spent. You can see it's mostly in social distance learning, which translates to technology related items. Um, PPE and cleaning are just about the same at about 10,000 each. And then we have, um, just as a reminder, Desi awarded Conway an additional $37,000 in COVID related expenditures and grants. So um, that's almost spent down. We have a little bit of money remaining that Chris and I will be working on making sure it's all used properly for the right funding sources. Um, but that's an update on COVID. Phil, do you have so can, can I just add to the, um, the, the, the COVID part about the town, uh, the town, so I guess that's the, the CARES Act stuff that the town, yep. and I, I wanted, I, I inquired as to 
uh, how close the requested expenditures are to the town's potential limit of, and I was told we're nowhere near close. Um, and, and that, you know, so, so that to the, ex I, to the, ex this is one of those things that to the extent that you can think really envelope expanding broad definitions and just try to get as much stuff in there as you can, because that's a funding source that they don't give it to you unless you ask for it. It might be okay to ask for stuff that you're not sure and let them say no if they want to. But, um, you know, the meal stuff is a problem. I, mean, I don't know. I, but um, when, when, when you hear, and then there's all these media stories of what other states and what other communities are asking for. And um, so far, there, there's really not very media, many stories about them, anybody being told no to anything. So I don't know. That's great. We'll definitely keep that in mind. Um, Tom has been excellent working with Kristen and I to make sure that he has what he needs to submit things properly. Um, and then the town is also funding a, their portion of Frontier's um, request as well. So that's great news too. Um, and certainly Kristen, you know, if there's something else that we want to ask for the town's support, I'm happy to reach out to Tom or you can reach out to him directly, obviously. Um, but we'll keep that in mind, Phil. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, those that like to have a clean audit trail, Phil, that don't like to stretch the boundaries of what you can, what you can get, <laughs> makes them a little uncomfortable when they're honest accounting types, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it has to be a COVID related unbudgeted expenditure. We can't just throw anything on there. So, you know, and right. I think Kristen and her team has done a really good job of making sure that what the school needs and then a little bit of what the school wants is also taken care of. So um, we'll certainly be reassessing, especially as we start to spend down the final money that we have um, left in the school grants to see if there's anything else big. Part of the other problem truthfully right now is that the way that the state wrote the grant funding is that you're supposed to have received benefit of the product by December 30th. And there's some things like we can't even place the second order of Chromebooks right now, even though we want to, because we can't get them in in time. And never mind in time, IT doesn't know if they can get them till May or June at this point. So we're restricted in some ways because of the way that they wrote the funding. So. Give, every, give everybody a tutorial. Give everybody a tutorial on the system before the end of December, and you're covered. <laughs> Um, I only have two more things to comment on. One is the 22 budget planning process. So the town has requested, Tom did send out the, the town's timeline. Um, and I think the budget, according to that initial calendar, is due in December. But I know Darius did have a conversation with Tom about, you know, school's obviously not going to be ready. I don't think we typically meet that early deadline anyway, because um, we're still in meetings. But there's just so many unknowns right now of what next year looks like. But we are starting to think about the budget and certainly putting the spreadsheets together in some rough form, but at this point it's really premature. Um, and then one additional comment is for FY21, the chapter 70, the state um, house submitted their uh, proposed budget, which did support level funding for schools. So for Conway, that would mean a loss of revenue to the town of just over $2,000. Um, I haven't heard anything from the town as to what that would mean for the schools, but, you know, hopefully they're not asking us to reduce by that amount of money. Um, it's a small amount compared to our, our larger budget, but um, just wanted you to make, make you aware that there would be a small loss in revenue to the town if the um, schools are funded level funding. That's all I have, unless you have other questions. Um, Any no, other level questions? funding disaster. What's that? Any other questions? Um, no, just about the about the town budget timeline. That's sort of a town administrator budget timeline, and that's his illustration of the various ways you can make his life easier if you do it faster. Um, but your budget timeline is the statutory budget timeline, and um, the same as it's been for many many years. Everything else is just a favor, so. Which would be much appreciated, but still. 
I seem to have something outside that the dogs are very interested in. So um, oh. anyway, do we have any public comment there, Darius? Yep. Was there any public comment? No public comment. No, yep, sorry, no one submitted. Okay. Um, okay. Are you checking out, Michael, or do you want to move, vote quickly on these policies? Yeah, I'll, I'll stay for the vote if we can do those first two for the unfinished business. Yes. Is that okay with everybody to move those up? All right. So first will be a vote on policy ACAB, anti-discrimination, anti-harassment policy and grievance procedure. We read it last time. We're to vote it tonight. Any comments? Nope. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve it? So moved. Second? I'll second. All right. Roll call vote. Michael? Yes. Um, Phil? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ashley? Yes. And I approve it, so it's unanimous. All right, so that passes, and now we're on to uh, vote for policy BEDH, public comment at school committee meetings. Can I have a motion to approve that? I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, Second. Policy BEDH. Yeah. Great. Do I have a second? Second. All righty. And roll call. Michael? Yes. Phil? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ashley? Was that a yes, Ashley? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to cook. I hate cooking. All righty. And yes for me. So they're both, that's unanimous also. All righty. Uh, thank you, Michael, for hanging out. Now we're on to anti-racism and equity committee update. So we were supposed to have Amanda back. Um, she hasn't logged in yet. Maybe she's shooting for the 530 mark. Um, I kind of told them about a half hour in is when we about get to there. So um, go <clears throat> as part of this, I was I was going to share the, um, the uh, administration PD plan around anti-racism work. Um, and so... I have a uh, I have a uh, PowerPoint, but I will go through it quickly because I know this committee likes, and I've sent it all to you, so you can redo it there. But I will get I'll jump ahead and just kind of um, go to the good stuff of with well, all good stuff. Uh, So um, basically, here's our anti-racism equity mission. Um, our district goals, which you know, basically run around run of those four subcommittees that our um, district-wide um, committee is working on, um, and for professional development, curriculum, policies, procedures, and school culture. Um, here's our district professional development goals. Um, and again, I won't, I won't read through all these because I've some of you have already seen them and. Um, if you want me to, though, of course I will. Just speak up. I can't see your faces when I start to present, so um, just let me know. Um, then the Ministry of um, Professional Development, is, you know, we believe that anti-racist schools leadership is about becoming racially aware and developing skills to dismantle racism-associated oppressions in our schools and communities. So these are the guiding questions for our administrative team. Um, And um, this is kind of the meat of our professional development, kind of an outline of what we've been working on. Obviously, we in the, during the summer, we created the, the committee to kind of help us set up the work and become really community involved and not leave one school on its own to do the work, but do it across all schools. Um, in October, we brought in Dr. Elizabeth Pryor, um, who's a professor at Smith College, who um, does a lot of um, work around use, the use of the N-word in, um, and also the use of the N-word in the classroom and in curriculum and how to address it. And, um, working with students and then we also we met with it just as a uh, administrative team um, we really kind of pressed her to ask some questions about leadership and, and how to best support teachers around this work 
Um, and she's, a, um, as I said, in meeting after meeting, a fantastic person. It was really a great um, time um, meeting with her and, and, and talking over things. In, uh, on October 26, we did the, all the administrative team did the REI Virtual Groundwater um, is the name of the program. And basically the, it's about you know, racial inequality across all systems, not just education, We're looking at the court systems, the legal, um, legal systems, the jail systems, um, and, and so on and so forth. And I'm um, just really talking about how it is in all, in all systems is racism and how the work has to kind of not happen just in education, but in, in all areas. So um, it, it was supposed to be for, it's for, for leaders. And I thought we were gonna get a little bit more about from this group about like how we as leaders can, can lead. You know, we we're kind of, I'm trying to find development just, just about leaders and it, it really didn't land it. So we are searching now still for more, um, you'll see in the spring in a second here. Um, we're trying to do there. Um, on November 3rd, we did a full day of anti-racism and equity PD work and all the administrators joined in on that. Um, it, was a, it was a fantastic day. And I think um, Amanda comes on, she'll explain what, what happened there because she led some of the things. We are doing a book discussion of the, between the world and me, um, you know, starting tomorrow. Um, and we have, we, you know, it's a short book, but we're kind of, you know, breaking up into two sessions over two months. Um, we're also doing Nice White Parents. It's a, it's a podcast. Those of you who enjoy podcasts, it's a great um, docu you know, podcast or you know, it's a documentary that's a proper term for it but looking about um, how looking at New York public school systems and how um, they try to do racial integration and how you know best intentions are not always the best intention um, don't always work out in it going there um, on January 22nd the administrative the um, UN 38 administrative staff is going to join um, continue the work with Amanda and, and a few others coming off of the full day anti-racism work that we did in November. Um, in February, March, we have our second book reading, um, The Origins of Our Discontents. And I'm looking to get a consultant to, uh, or book, book group facilitator to kind of push us, not just talking about the book, but push us into the, the ideas in that book. Um, and then when I'm looking at April and May, this is the part of the TBD that was kind of holding back on in presenting this plan because I'm really trying to find more for leadership, you know, to help, you know, help the leadership through the difficult areas of, you know, leading a community. What do you do about when there's, when not everybody's on board or how do you deal with difficult situations? How do you, you know, how do you keep it sustainable? So, and so, you know, that's kind of a, you know, where I want to fit there. Then the, our summer summit, we'll be looking at next year and working with our committee and so forth. So, um, and then Frontier, this is Frontier. They're, they're using a they're using the, the um, radical empathy consulting group out of UMass, um, and, and slightly they're doing a, a different path there. So, anyway, that is it. That is what I have there for. Um, how do I stop sharing my screen here? Um, for what the administration is doing, people were asking about that, especially in some of the other schools. Questions on that? Great. Thank you. So maybe we just wait on Amanda showing up and- um, Do you wanna go on to the snow day yeah, policy? I would just keep moving on. The, the snow days was just an update. I, I, you know, I sent an email out to everybody that's saying, we talked about it last time. You know, I look at last month's agenda to create the next month. And I was like, we never kind of closed the loop. You know, basically the, the, what the message I put out for those watching at home is um, that we will have remote days on snow days unless we get, um, you know, large snowfall that may cause power outages and just more kind of a stoppage in the community. Um, what that number is, I didn't set it in stone, but we'll know it when we see it. <laughs> or I'll know it when I see it. How's that? And then people can be mad at me, right? Not knowing what a lot of snow is. <clears throat> but I grew up in Worthington, so like you Conwayites, I know what a lot of snow is. All right. It was so, snowing here today, Darius. I should have canceled. Yep. <laughs> was coming down like crazy. Uh, do we want to keep going on? Sure. Okay. Um, the next one is the community health indicators. Um, yeah. uh, it's been, it's been, we've been busy, um, you know, as, with the COVID spike happening in our um, greater community, um, uh, Conway has been, um, has been very good. We've been fortunate not to have any, um, any cases and where my wood is, I continue to knock on. Um, and COVID's been kind of clean right now, though. However, in our other schools, we have 45 people that are quarantined. So it is quite significant in our overall community. Um, and this is the, again, I have another 
I shared that with all of you. Um, and I'll kind of, again, fly through this, um, move quickly through it, and then you guys obviously have a copy of this if you want to go through it for, obviously, the number one things that stop the trans, um, you know, transmission of this disease is mask. Um, and I still have to change that type issue. It's not mange illness, it's managed. Um, you know, staying home if you're sick, okay? So what I did is I highlighted the changes that the, our key data sources are still the same. Um, basically what happens, I sent this out to the, the, um, the uh, who are they? The boards of health to get them to approve this. And then on that Friday, the governor came out with the new metrics. So we, I've, in, I've dropped this in. And so the boards of health may have to re-look at it again, but basically they were looking at, um, they changed, they created this thing here under 10,000, um, the difference between going gray to red. I mean, places like Conway, um, you were, you know, four and under, you were gray, above five, you were red. So there was no green or yellow. It was either you're a gray town or a red town. And then if you have five cases and all in one house, you could be a red town, which is not a true indicator. So there is some logic behind changing the overall calculation. There is some debate out there whether it really tells us enough in really small communities like um, Conway. Um, but I think the biggest thing when you're looking at some places like Conway is that we continue to work closely with the boards of health um, and to look at cases that are there in the, in the town. How are they affecting the school? You know, is there an effect on the school? And then make decisions from there. Um, Yassi has also come out that basically said you have to be red for three weeks um, before deciding to go remote learning only. Um, I think we've already kind of, again, talked as a, with the boards of health, we'll make that decision based on the numbers in our town and how that affects, um, affects us. The data indicators, um, we did run into um, a secondary indicator that um, because of UMass that made Sunderland red at one point, um, that basically said, you know, this was a data indicator to close schools. The Sunderland Board of Health met and basically said these are UMass students, not a not community spread in that particular time, um, made a decision to have school going. And we included language in here regarding that. Um, also, it was incident rate was, um, I believe it said before, daily rate and it's daily incident rate. That's just a, using proper vocab between um, indicator pages um, from the state. And basically we moved toward, you know, that, and the secondary indicators what I was talking about would trigger an immediate consult with the Board of Health, um, which we are basically on the phone with almost every day. Um, so um, you don't need to be, you know, be triggering that as much as you can't trigger it any more than we are already doing. Um, and then our um, tertiary numbers indicators rather have not changed. They're basically looking at if we see you know, other things outside of our numbers changing. And then the last few pages is talk about, you know, the rapid testing unit um basically that will um if you have two or more cases that include school transmission you can ask for the rapid trend the rapid mobile testing unit and then the, the ending pages kind of explain the definition of the rapid mobile testing unit what does it do um and then the you know what you have to have in order for it to be deployed um at the same time we also um are a finalist in a grant that's going to allow us to have um some, some level of testing by our school nurses. We're in the final stages of that. So um, that's exciting. Um, we're kind of working on the paperwork there, but I think I do think we'll get it where we have a number of tests of antigen testing, which is a lot of false positives on those tests, but at least if someone's not feeling well, they can do an immediate swab there before they go get a PCR um, to have an indication of where things are at. So, um, you know, I believe uh, Meg is working on those um, the final paperwork and getting that done, but I think we made the first round of awarding. I think it's just all about paperwork at this time, but um, I'll release that when I get all that information. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, the, um, the boards of health are discussing whether or not um, there should be a break taken after Thanksgiving. Um, and they're having that meeting tonight um, and discussing, you know, uh, looking at the managing the cases they have now and, you know, do we need to take a break? And, you know, just to be blunt about that, there's two very different views of this. Um, I'm kind of lost in the middle of those views right now because seeing the both sides, seeing the amount of work it takes for you, the tracking 
and trying to keep you know classrooms safe in the, the overall spike in numbers. But you know, school transmission is not where it's happening. It's happening in the community, and then people are coming to school, you know, staying apart because of our protocols. Um, schools are very, are showing to be very safe. However, there is that level of unease where you know, you know, we built this remote system so that when we get numbers like we're having now, you know, should we be exercising that? So. That's kind of the, the talk in the air of the community and the boards of health. So I thought I'd just add that on there now so you know what's going on. All righty. Is that, is that the phase three hybrid planning? Or is that different? No, that's different. So the phase three hybrid planning, so it, 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 timing wise, it looks really, it looks really, it looks um, interesting. Um, because people are saying like, you know, we're seeing the, the greatest spike we've had in our in our county right now. And you guys are talking about changing models. Um, but this started, this is almost you know, two, three weeks ago. I met with the principals and I said, listen, we're in the middle of October at that point, the second half of October. And I said, we need to start putting an outline of what it looks like. What's the next phase look like? You know, our goal was to get to here. Um, you know, what can we do to, to improve the, our um, model? Can we bring more students in? Um, can we change the way we're doing things if things aren't working? Um, and basically put it to each school because each school is very different. Um, Conway is very different than obviously Deerfield and they have different challenges there compared to Sunderland with different challenges there. So um, Kristen's actually going to talk a little bit about, this is part of her kind of principal's report about, you know, what, what does it look like for Conway um, and, you know, the timing of um, what we can do. Um, I'm not trying to shove a, you know, shove down top down that we change our system or do more immediately. But at the time it was, we need to plan ahead. Um, and then, you know, we'll look at, you know, have a plan. And then if the numbers don't cooperate to our plan, then we can choose not to move forward the plan, just put it on the back burner, or um, we move forward the plan depending on, you know, what it is. And so Kristen's gonna jump in, I think, with the plan. Yeah, so um, we currently, we have um, coming four days a week is pre-K who have been coming four days a week all along and the wings program. And um, we have kindergarten coming four days a week. We started grade one, two weeks ago. Um, so they're coming four days a week. Yesterday we started grade two and three, four days a week. Um, and it just as it happened to turn out today, um, fourth and fifth grade were in, full, you know, that were in full day. And at the end of the day, I said, oh, wow. So today we had pre-K, K, one, two, three, four, and five all in. Um, and, you know, it went very, not thinking about that throughout the day. It was at dismissal time when I, I was saying to the staff that they've done really an amazing job with the dismissal. Um, I was thinking, wow, we have, we have almost all the kids in school today. Um, but we're certainly giving respect to the staff and the parents with, you know, giving two week notice and checking out, you know, to see how it's going. So that's why we introduced grades two and three this week. Um, and then we, after the holidays, we're going to regroup and we'll make a plan. We're, we're meeting with the instructional leadership team this week and then the building um, committee team this week to talk about, can we put a plan out? a tentative plan out for parents soon um, so that they know when their grades will be coming back four days a week. Um, and so I hope we can do that. Um, and again, it's tentative. We'll have, we have to see what happens after the holiday. We don't certainly don't want kids coming back January 4th, four days a week. We want to give it a little bit of time in between. Um, we've been very, very, very cautious um, at Conway Grammar School, you know, as all other schools have been, but We've really taken um, the cohorting very seriously. Related service providers are not yet seeing all cohorts. We're doing, we're managing um, IEP, um, uh, um, IEP, not demands, what's the mandates in, you know, many different ways, but we're being very respectful of the staff and their comfort level. And we're rolling things out slowly, but it, in general, it's going very well. I will tell you that these children are so happy to be in school. Um, so, you know, it's a, we're, I'm, I'm really trying to balance, you know, um, every day, these children who are so happy and a, a, and a staff that, 
you know, is fairly stressed about COVID and what's happening around them with COVID. And, um, you know, everyone really trying to do their best to stay with their cohorts within their families and within our school. And, and um, you know, I think it's very going very well um, being in the middle of a pandemic like we are. But what strikes me every day and really brings tears to my eyes is just how happy these kiddos are to be in school. I've never seen such imagination at play you know they're not using they can't use the structure they can't use the playground equipment so they're building forts and they're playing house and they're playing school and they're playing different games and it's every staff member has commented on how heartwarming it's been to bring their imaginations back and they're really using their imaginations and you know to be honest with you knock on wood I haven't had a conflict to deal with or a behavior issue they're just so happy to be in school and they're just playing you know they're playing outside during mass breaks they're playing outside we're outside a lot over at conway we are outside a lot um you know the kids are still eating outside we have a good plan for indoor eating when that has to happen i think we have a solid plan for that because we know that that's a area of concern and we're sort of rotating the larger class sizes into thirds you know third of the students eating at a time inside um, but we're out there. I mean, uh, fifth grade was there today. And Denise, you'll know that they, they do outside pretty much all day long. Uh, our tents are still up. We're going to keep our tents up until the December break. Um, they're out there in the snow. They're out there in the rain. Um, you know, with balancing well with the kids and, you know, coming in for breaks and things like that. But we got we have a hardy crew, students and staff over at Conway. They're outside, which is great. So um, you'll be hearing... Um, you know, maybe before the break, if we do feel comfortable putting out a plan, maybe right after the break in terms of when the other grades will be coming back four days a week. It's a heck of a, heck of a pandemic and they're playing for what you, What'd you say? One of the things they're playing in the playground is playing school, you said. I said it's a heck of a they're pandemic when school. you have to go to school and play school. Yes. People playing school, and it's so funny to listen to them. I've said to some teachers, "Why wow, you're doing a great job? Because when they play school, they're you, and you're doing a great job." <laughs> it's fun. That's, it's really that's fun. Awesome. They're really, they're really fun. Really fun. I bet they're bad, glad to be back. I mean, this is just crazy on kids. Um, do we want to go on to capital planning? Sure. I also sent to all of you the capital planning um, workbook. That is a live document and we'll be modifying that and changing that as you know things happen and that kind of thing. So it's a, um, you don't have the ability to, to uh, change anything in it. So don't worry about messing it up as you flip through stuff, but you do have the ability to kind of see it. Um, and I will present, should I present it now? Kristen, you think that's the best route? Do you want to walk through the, I'm going to put it back into your lap because it's your, Sure, sure. You, just, you had the conversations with um, their okay. own stuff. So um, the article, um, of the money that we received from the article, uh, a total of $11,623.20 has been spent, and that was the hallway carpet. I'll round it out. Hallway carpet, which was about $9,000. Um, the hydration station, which was about $1,600. Um, and, and, oh, plus $800 for the plumbing. Uh, still, be, we have a remainder of about 16900 Still be to be done as the library carpet, which our estimate is around $10,000. Um, and that's what we had on the article. Um, in the past, you've allowed me, and we'll, we'll get to that when it comes, but you've allowed me to uh, go to Tom and ask. Did we lose Kristen? Kristen, you or kinda, we do have an ask. Oh, she's back. What, what, oh, um, one thing we'd like to try to get done this year is take down the walls in the um, computer lab area because they just don't serve a purpose and it's hard for classroom teaching. Um, so at the end of this, like I said, we should have some money left over and then we can talk with, you know, what we have some ideas. Um, so then um, Shelly has... Um, put these in one, two, three order for us, which is great. The replacement generator is approximately $60,000. Uh, what Bruce says is that it could last for six years, 10 years, 
or it could last for two more days. I, we, we're not even able to get some parts to it anymore because it's so old. So something that we might, that we just want to keep in mind, um, you know, do we want it to be an emergency situation? Do we want to plan for it? So that's on there as a one. We usually do um, three classroom floorings a year. Um, and so they average about $6,000. And then I've talked to you about somehow trying to figure out how to soundproof the psychologist's office. And by soundproofing, I mean, she's, she's right next to the gym and we really don't have another place for her. And it's, it's so loud in there. I don't, I don't even think that room is functional at all for anybody because it's so loud. Before I came, I have to say there was a door on there that did soundproof it. And, um, but the minute the fire marshal came, he said that needs to come down. It was, you know, it was a real big violation. So right now we don't have anything. And then um, I don't think you want me to go through the twos and threes. I mean, everyone could read. I do want to say something about the ACs because many of you have brought that up. So we talking about doing like one classroom a year or one or two classroom a, classrooms a year with the split um, air condition. But Bill Hildreth told me that the state, it looks like the state might be coming out with a program like they have, like they are with the lighting, um, Darius, what, it, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm having word issues tonight that, you know, the lighting that's yep. going to happen. Yep. They might be coming up with a program, um, similar to that for ACs. So Bill recommended we wait a whole year before we do any action on that. And Shelly, you might know a little more about that. I just had a conversation with him yesterday. Yeah, so there's a, there's a project with Eversource that we are having all of the lighting changed out at no cost to Conway that it will save the school and electricity utility bills. Um, and Bill thinks that there's going to be something coming out for air conditioning units as well. I'm not sure where he heard it from, but I think he's trying to see if that comes through. Um, and then if that's the case, we could get the project funded without having to pay for it. So could, could I ask a question about that gener the generator number? Just because, the, the, as you know, the town school is also the town emergency shelter. Yeah. So has anybody inquired as to whether there's all those emergency EMS kinds of grants, first responder grant, all that stuff? There's so much. There's so much funding in that area. Has anybody inquired as to whether that generator can be partially funded? That. I think it, I think you bring up a good point, Phil. And, and, and I did the same thing last year in Deerfield. Um, Deerfield Elementary doesn't have a generator, and it was wired to have a generator. Um, and I said, "Listen, I don't want this as a school expense in the sense of like there's other things educationally needed. Isn't this a you know a you know a safety place for the town?" So I think it, I think it might be a conversation to bring to the select board as well, and kind of say like this is. How do you guys want to approach this? Is it is it a school is it a school expense? Is it a town expense? I mean, how we small enough where the departments aren't as divided as some of the other towns, where there's a little bit more, um, you know, boundaries. I won't say you know fighting or whatnot, but there, there's boundaries of different people's budgets, and your kind of budgets are a little bit more together. Um, so you know, it is you know a question that we can look. Maybe we start. Maybe the with the generator, it still works. So maybe right now with the idea is let's start looking for grants and finding ways of paying for it um, and kind of opening it up to all the, you know, let the police and fire know that we're doing this too. Is there any other, you know, uh, you know uh, I don't know, Homeland Security grants regarding, because you guys had to use that as a shelter multiple times already. Um, and one would expect in the future you would as well. So I think that might be a a prudent way to move forward. I don't think we should just go out and ask for the 60,000 just yet, considering it still works. You agree? I'll Christian? do that, Terry. Yeah, I'll do that. I will do exactly that. I'll start the work on that um, after Thanksgiving. I'll, I'll reach out to, you know, also other schools that might have recently done this and different funding sources and Tom and exactly what you said. I'll do that. Yep. Well, I we, thought we, we are brought that up before. I thought, I thought, Phil, that, that somebody was looking into that at the town level, no? Did we just kick it around among ourselves? Uh, I don't I don't know, but it could be one, you know, I never know what the left hand knows, what the right hand's doing and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, um, but, you know, that, and, and then the other thing is that even, like, even if there is no other sources of funding, 
is that something that we want to directly fund or is that one of the reasons why we have a capital stabilization account? It's the same reason why we haven't direct, directly funded our boiler because even though that's though, though that uh, has a, a, its expiration date has already come and gone. But as long as it's still working, we have that money set aside. So, I, you know, may, it's good, maybe it's a, it's a good point, Bill. No. It's a good point in the sense of, you know, um, you know, we have the reserve funding there. Conway has, the re even if we didn't have the school one, I think Conway would have the some reserve funding too, um, you know, to replace that if we want to just ride it until it breaks. But it is our job as a school, and, and a problem why we're showing the new setup here of, of showing one, twos, and threes, any three could turn into a one when it breaks. You know what I mean? Or, you know, that, I mean, you just kind of going, we're just trying to show everything that's coming down the line really trying to be transparent. Um, and Conway's in great shape. You know, there are buildings where there's a list of ones that can't all be funded. Um, and so, you know, very, you know, Conway should be proud of its community and supporting their, their infrastructure of their buildings and such. Um, so, but the idea there is to, to be transparent and we have to, if the, the generator broke tomorrow, the select board would say, you didn't tell us it was about to break. When someone says, yeah, we knew that thing was gonna break for the years now. Then we're in, you know, our, our due diligence is to say, What's our planning? If our planning is, you know what, we're not going to put money into that until at least right now for the next couple of years, we'll ride it as far as we can. And if it breaks, well, then we then we'll find the money. And, you know, if there's an emergency, they can bring an emergency generator in. Um, they, those, those do exist. So. Yeah. And then, you know, so, and all, all that being, all that being said, uh, you know, I like the idea of you asking, you know, warrant for anything, you know, I, if, if, if you take that generator number out, then your request is really pretty light and you might want to consider adding some of the number twos to, uh, to, to this, you know, just, just because it, that, that these particular uh, 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 spending items always seem to go down pretty smoothly at our town meeting. It's, yeah. and, and it's, it's, cause it's a, it's a coherent thing that you're asking for. It's, you know, it's the building to, you know, whatever, it, it always goes well. So, um, I always say if there's next year could be a lot worse. It always seems that way. Um, right. So uh, we'll, we'll look at that. Go ahead. Sorry. If they can get a three hundred thousand dollar truck every year of some form or type, oh. we should be able to fund the stuff they and, need for the school. And and the other thing is that the playground's not going to be on the warrant this year. That was last year. That's done. Even though it's on our paperwork and it still looks like it's a big number that we got to deal with, it's actually all all said and done already um so we can we you know so basically we'll we'll bring together um the this information is not due to 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 the the town until i think it's mid-december and such i don't think they're actually going to do action on until january maybe we'll bring it back at the next meeting and you guys can vote officially what you want to move forward as the as the ones um because I think moving the generator off that, the generator on that obviously is a big one. You remove that, you, I think you're exactly right, Phil. Maybe we a two should be should rise up um, onto there. Yeah. yeah. Good. I agree. All righty. So we're done with new business. Um, Kristen, was that your principal's report? You sent us one that we all read. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you, Elaine. Okay. Um, Darius, do you have a report for us? I do not. Okay. Um, Denise, any collaborative report? Did we lose Denise? Sorry, no. Um, I've only been to one meeting, and I haven't been to a meeting since our last meeting. It's tomorrow, six to nine. Oh, okay. I don't Great. have anything to report, but possibly the next meeting. Awesome. And I don't have a report. Uh, do we need executive session, Darius? No. Nope. So should we just hold on the fur any further update on the racism and equity committee? Yeah, we, we can combine the two. There was a there was a big professional development day, and I want um, you know the de I don't have the details of that in front of me to yeah. to, to wing it with, with yeah. any. Um, you know, other than that, they did a lot of different projects and they, there was a lot of great stuff that happened on November 3rd. And I think the teachers really enjoyed not only having some choice, but the, 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 the sessions that they were in. Um, and we'll get the details to that at the next meeting. 
Okay. Um, Kristen, I'm, I may have access to a, a not so old router. Would you think somebody in the could use that? Yeah. You know, Elaine, I have some, I have a few families. If you don't mind it going to a family that could definitely use that. Okay. I'll see if I can pry it out of Clayton's hands. He doesn't really need it because we have, oh. you know, whatever, but I think, yeah. Thank good. you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, and Shelly, the superintendent of Chicopee says hi. <laughs> And she says, they can't have her. They can't have her back. Oh, no way, no how. I, 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 I pull them, hair. Yeah, I was telling him that. I said, "Oh, we feel very lucky to have her." And no, you can't have her back. So, anyway. <laughs> so, but she she gave you a glowing review, of course. So did I. So anyway, yeah. Alrighty, if that's it, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, uh, Phil? Yes. Denise? Yes. Ashley? Yep. Ashley. Yes. And my, my, it's unanimous. Okay, thanks, everybody.